with a kick of 27 yards, make it a 37-yard kick for the win. It's up, it is on its way, and the price is right, and down go the tree, and the Buffs win as time expires and snap a five-game losing streak with a 16-13 win over the Stanford Cardinal for homecoming here in Boulder, Colorado. Oh, did that feel good. A uh, walk-off field goal by Evan Price in a Buffalo snap a five-game losing streak and win on homecoming here at Folsom Field, 16 to 13. Hi, everybody. Welcome into the Buffalo Stampede. Voice of the Bus, Mark Johnson, along with Coach Gary Barnett. You, you said something during our post game. You said when you get in a losing streak, you feel like you're never going to get another win. And what a relief for Mel Tucker and the Buffaloes. Well, it is. It's such a relief. And that's why you saw, we saw those kids acting like kids, like little <laughs> kids, and Mel acting like a little kid. And I mean, it's so glorious. And it's to, to win. It yeah. is so glorious. And there's nothing like it in, in your life. And so uh, it's fun to watch him. It's fun to, to be a part of it, as we are to some extent. But, you know, I, I appreciated that football game. That was a, a field position. Everybody's involved. Uh, the punter was critical in the game. The field goal kickers were critical in the game. They missed one. You know, we didn't. Uh, it's just sort of an old-school game, which, you know what, when you play Stanford, that's pretty much what you right. get. They slow the game down. They only had 54 plays. We had 71. Um, but, uh, you know, you, you've got to hang in there. We had a six-minute drive there at the end of the game, Mark, you know, to seal that thing. And it was right at six when they started. And that is a thing of beauty. If you're a football coach, when you can do a six-minute drive and win it with a walk-off, there isn't anything better than that. Because <laughs> penalties, you don't commit a penalty, which we've been doing. That stopped today. Um, you know, we had a, two critical fourth downs that were converted in there. And so we, we had some guys make some plays. So it's as good as it gets as a football coach. You don't care about the score. Yeah. It's the fact that you found a way to win on a six-minute drive. 14 plays, six-minute drive. And then the kick, of course, by Evan Price. You know, special teams. We know we hear coaches like here. They're always talking about how important special teams are. He talked about uh, the punting. But how about Evan Price coming in? James Stefano. Has to come. Does not play in this ball game. Evan Price has to come in. Hits a couple of field goals, including a game winner for a redshirt freshman. Well, you know where it really pays off. I mean, and that's awesome for him. And it's, it's so good that he paid attention and kept his head in the game, practiced every day, and understood that he may be the guy, and he, and he was. But give him credit for that, thinking that way. Yeah. What that's going to do. Everybody that's in a backup role all of a sudden can say, you know, it really does happen. They tell us it'll happen, but it really can happen to me. They'll work harder. You wait practice next Monday. That'll be the best practice they had all year. Yeah, Buffalo's get the win going into the bye week. It was an emotional Mel Tucker after the ball game. Been blessed to be a part of some really good teams. Got a couple national championships, but I can honestly say I've never been more proud of a football team than I am today. Yeah, I was really, really proud of our players today. They really showed a lot of grit and determination. Buff Nation is so strong. Uh, the, our crowd was out, outstanding. We filled the place up. It was uh, just a, having the disciplines do our job down the stretch. Uh, the kids were really, they were really playing for each other. It was a, just a great team win and complimentary football. We believe in our players, you know, and we knew that if we continued to work with them, um, that they would, they would come around for us. And the, the scores hadn't really reflected it, but really the last three weeks, last three games, I've really seen some improvement. I thought today uh, would be a breakout game. The last thing I said in the locker room before the game to the, to the team is defense, time to go. My hat goes off to our players. I mean, they, they had the discipline to do their jobs. We were poised and patient. You know, we were physical. We are just really believing in what we were doing, you know, everyone doing their job. It feels great. I really feel good for our, our players. I feel good for our coaches. Guys have worked really hard. It's been a, it's been a tough stretch for us. But my hat goes off to our fans. Uh, they've, they've stuck with us uh, here at home uh, the, the entire season. That was the head coach after the Buffs get that 16-13 walk-off win over the Sanford Cardinal for homecoming. Hall of Fame weekend. It was Military Appreciation Weekend. You know, this defense for Colorado was taking its lumps. They had a stretch of 14 consecutive games, giving up 30 or more points. They hold Stanford to 13. That side of the ball, really, for three of the four quarters, played outstanding in this game. Yeah, they did. And, you know, uh, Tyson Summers and, and Coach Tucker had a pretty exotic defense cooked up. They did a lot of double teaming from guys that – didn't look like they were going to be in a position to double team. They gave up some plays, you know, that they wish they had back. And a year from now and two years from now, when they have more uh, depth and more experienced players, 
that's the kind of stuff you're going to see, and they're going to be so much better at it than what they were today, and, and they were pretty good at it today. Boy, how much does this help from a coaching standpoint? You get late in the season, you drop five in a row, to kind of get the attention of your team once again to get a win like this. Well, here, here's what it's like. For two weeks, the sun is going to be out. And for the last five weeks, it's been gone. You haven't seen the sun. That, I mean, that is literally the way it feels. Yeah, the but, sun gives you energy. You got energy. And uh, those cloudy days are over for two weeks. Yeah, the food tastes better. The air is sweeter here in the front <laughs> range. By the way, uh, congratulations to Hall of Fame this weekend. Good for you. Thank you, Mark. All right. was, that's that's the humbling experience. <laughs> that's the coach, Gary Barnett. And it all wraps up with a victory, too. So it's a great weekend. Coming up next, he's not a Hall of Famer. Well, he is in my book. Neil Welk at CUBusJob.com is going to join us next here in the Stampede. Montez out of the shotgun, the snap, turns to his left, he keeps his time, he turns a corner, he's running to the left front pylon, he ties to the end zone, touchdown, touchdown Colorado, and in the process Montez goes over 10,000 yards of total offense. Well, we thought going to this ball game, Steven Montez was going to set a record. It was going to be the passing touchdown record. He didn't get one of those, but he did get his third rushing touchdown of the season. And with that run, went over 10,000 yards of total offense, just the second Buffalo ever to do that. Back in the stampede, voice of the bus, Mark Johnson, Neil Welk of CUBus.com as we continue to unpack this walk-off 16-13 win for the Buffaloes over Stanford. <sighs> Everyone needed that, didn't they? I tell you what, every, you know, in that locker room, they were excited. The coaches were excited. Fans were excited. And I, you know, I'm, I'm like Mel Tucker. I give the fans a lot of credit. They came back yeah. out. This team had lost five in a row, and they came back out, packed the stadium today, and, you know, helped them do a win. Yeah, great stuff. Well, that, that defensive side of the ball, I thought, really played well. They, they snapped that 14 game streak of getting 30 or more points every game this season. Not today. And they need, you know, they needed that because they, you know, and I know it, it, it's hard to say that, but they had been playing a little bit better the last few weeks and getting a little bit better and a little bit better, give up some big plays, miss some turnovers, but it finally played off for them today. And they kept on, as Terrence Lang told me in the locker room, you know, we just kept chopping, kept chopping. We knew we were going to get there. And, and Terrence had a big sack there at the, at, you know, in that fourth quarter. That's right. He was part of that as well. Uh, Nate Landman was outstanding, and Nate's been unbelievable this season. Davion Taylor continues to flash, doesn't he? Davion Taylor's, you know, he got it invited to the uh, Senior Bowl just last week. That's he right. accepted an invitation to play in the Senior Bowl, and he's a guy, and you saw today why the scouts like him more and more because he has speed, and now he's starting to get a feel for the game of football. He hasn't played it for a long time, but he was in a lot, made a lot of plays in a lot of places uh, in that game. Yeah, Steven cleaned up his game quite a bit today. Didn't have a mm -hmm. passing touch. He had the one interception. It was just a bad read on an RPO. But, but he played pretty well today. Cleaned up a lot of those mental issues that we've been seeing last week. Yeah, I thought, and I, I thought Steven was, did a good job of managing the game. He yeah. came out there that last drive, six minutes, uh, took him down the field, never panicked, uh, just, just ran that game like you're supposed to against a good Stanford team. And, and like Gary Barnett said, that was a physical, physical bunch. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. You know, next Saturday, it's a bye week for the Buffaloes. You've got basketball, the home opener for the men against San Diego. They open up this past weekend with a victory on the road. And boy, were they on the road in China over Arizona State. Welcome to Shanghai, China, the site of the fifth annual Pac-12 China game. It's Deshaun Schwartz with an answer for the buzz. Deshaun Schwartz not quiet with his second three. Quarter three, Lucas Seward nails it for Colorado. The Maddox Daniels, the JC transfer for Colorado, off balance gets it to go. Maddox Daniels hits a corner three. Largest lead for Colorado. McKinley Wright sensing the shot clock running down, and McKinley Wright gets his first points of the game. McKinley Wright's got to attack. Draws the foul and one. We mentioned it earlier. Tough fade away from Deshaun Schwartz and a pretty shot off the window. Schwartz makes it a 14-point Colorado lead. You uh, just asked me. Here goes McKinley Wright. What a move by Wright. They elevate up a three. And Evan Batty on the offensive glass. And powers his way back up. Drop step, Evan Batty. And one is on Kamani Lawrence's second. Tyler Bay elevates over everybody. Three in transition from Maddox Daniels, his second. Tough runner from McKinley Wright. As McKinley Wright scoops it in. We were aligned about two of the best guards in the country, and we're seeing them show out here. 
Outside the restricted area as Tyler Bay gathers underneath. What a strong on the drive. McKinley right to the bucket. Jalen House opened his hips too much that time. Drops it off, broken up by Evan Batty. And here comes McKinley right a three on one for Tyler Bay. That is a big, big sequence in this game, Roxy. 81-71, Colorado gets the season opening win at the fifth annual Pac-12 China game. Now, what a win for Tad Boyle and the Buffaloes on the road in Shanghai, China, as they knocked off the Arizona State Sun Devils back here on the field at Folsom Field. MJ and Neil Welk, Buffs win 16-13 in football, knocking off Stanford uh, in this ball game. The specialists, I know coaches always tell us how important specialists are, and I think a lot of times we go, oh, yeah, sure they are. In this ball game, Alex Kinney, what he did punting today was outstanding, and Evan Price coming in for James Stefano and kicking a game winner. Well, what, a, what a great example of field position, that game all day long. Oh. Hunters going back and forth, and they're playing for 10 yards here and 15 yards here, and Alex had Alex did a great job, and uh, I love Evan Price. It was so funny. Evan Price kicks the game winner, then he walks into the post-game press conference, and I thought he was going to throw up. It looked like he was scared to death. I mean, the kid just got done kicking a yeah. you know, game-winning field goal in front of 50,000 people and the scariest scariest moment of the day was when he had to walk into the press conference in front of all the TVs. He goes, I've never seen this many cameras. Yeah. That's the way I feel every day when I walk in the office <laughs> and see Neil, not to be honest with you. Great stuff, though. Great kid. Gets a chance today. Kicks the 37-yard uh, uh, game-winner in the Buffalo to get the victory. Hall of Fame weekend. You know, it's got a quick comment. You've been around this program a long time. That was a fine class of 10 that people, was... including Coach Barnett. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I didn't mean to separate you, but that came across not as I intended it to. No, you know, Gary, definitely a part of just a great class. Yeah. I, every year they have great people coming into that class. And, you know, from Jane Wall to Brian Cabral to, to Jenny Berenger Simpson to Gary Barnett to Jan Rahima, all the great people that came into that class. And, and it reminds you of the history and the tradition the University of Colorado Athletics actually has. Yeah, outstanding. A great weekend for the Colorado Buffaloes. But now they've got the bye week, of course, and Washington coming in here in a couple of weeks to take on the Buffaloes for Senior Day. That's on November 23rd. As they wrap up with Neil Welk from CUBuffs.com coming up next, we talk Hall of Fame. One of the Hall of Famers, Administrator Jane Wall is going to join us next here in the Stampede. I've been blessed by God ever since coming to Colorado from Hawaii. I've been blessed by coaches and players, teammates along my playing and coaching career here uh, at CU. And I've been blessed by, uh, as well, uh, many fans who have cheered and support, supported me through the years. But it takes a village to raise a player and a coach like me. How does a buff get to be called back again to serve CU? I want to thank Athletic Director Rick George. I want to thank Head Coach Mel Tucker. Thank you for bringing me and my family back home into the CU fold. Thank you. What are some great comments from the legendary assistant coach here at the University of Colorado, Brian Cabral, at the Hall of Fame induction ceremonies at the CU Event Center, voice of the Buffs, Mark Johnson. Just really pleased to have this woman with us here. You know, you think of Hall of Famers, some are impactful, some are foundational, some are pioneering, <laughs> and that's what Jane Wall was. She was the first women's athletic director here at Correct. the University of Colorado. Correct. Blazing a trail. First off, that had to be quite a thrill for you on Thursday night. It was an amazing, wildest dream. Yeah. Couldn't, have, uh, couldn't have touched that. Take us back to, you know, Title IX gets passed in the early 70s. You're brought on board as a women's athletic director at that time and, and coordinating the transition from what club sports to then varsity sports. That had to be quite an undertaking. It was an incredible undertaking, but I had an incredible mentor, Bill Appenzeller, who had a vision for where women's athletics needed to go. So between the two of us, we chose which sports with the limited funds. Students were totally funding the women's program at that wow. point, totally. There was no institutional support at all. So we cut it down to the sports that we could fund, mm -hmm. and then... Uh, a little later on, Roland Routenstrauss, the president, called Eddie Crowder and me in and said, you guys work it out. We could lose $62 million in federal funds if you don't. Wow. But wow. the university did not give any funds to it, help that happen. It had to be a, a fascinating time and maybe somewhat scary at time because you're, you're totally blazing a new trail about where this is all going to go. How did that process take place? I suppose you talk about having a great team around you, but still... That had to be a, a, quite a fascinating process. It was, and you knew that in years past there had been uh, full-fledged women's programs that mm -hmm. had just been shut down. So you just tried to follow 
try to avoid the men's pitfalls. Okay. And try to let as many women have opportunities as they could for like people like Jenny Simpson. Yeah. Yeah. So did you sit down initially and start thinking about, okay, what are the exact programs? Because you couldn't go full bore, I would think, that right is, off the bat, right? That is, that is correct. Yeah. So we went with the individual sports first okay. because those were the ones that you could take an, a very high-skilled athlete and send her to a national championship or co competitions. And then we took the top, smallest team sport, which was basketball. Okay. And that's how we went. And then they added more sports later. Uh, fascinating stuff as we got this Hall of Fame weekend. We're going to continue with Jane Bobble. Right now, let's take a look at some of the highlights from some of the other speakers on Thursday at the CU Event Center. All of my successes are due to the performance and how everybody works together as a team of all the people around me. It, it takes a village and tonight I would like to share this honor with my village. Ten years ago, when I came here uh, as a student, uh, we trained in Balch Field, which is a far cry from the brand new beautiful indoor facility um, that is now built in their beautiful, beautiful uh, locker room. And they totally deserve it all, but I am a little jealous. He began playing football in the 1880s. American football was a young sport with an uncertain set of rules. As a third generation, Fred Folsom, this is the coach that I learned from listening to my dad talk about him. Truly a buff's life's honor to be inducted into this elite group. I truly share this honor with all my teammates, my buff brothers for life. When you come here, it still feels like a community that I was a part of. And when Coach Marol was here and became the AD, and what he did as an athletic director and what Bill McCartney did as a coach and a staff that he had that changed things based on Colorado players. And especially when, when Bill McCartney came along and, and took us to the, to the very top. Nothing made Ed prouder than watching those guys. So obviously this, this award is not about me. This is about the support I had through the years and this is about validation. I mean, just, I've had amazing support. I'm a Nordic coach here now. I love working with young, motivated athletes. They are absolute best. I see some of them here. I see my friends and family. Thank you for your support, and go Buffs. Now, great highlights there from the Hall of Fame induction ceremony. We continue with uh, Administrator Jane Wall. So here we stand here in 2019. Can you believe where it's all gone? I, I cannot. I am pleased. I'm very pleased when you see how the women's program has just the people who followed me took the baton and sprinted. Yeah, yeah. So when you got finished up, you left here in 1978, if I'm correct, right? 79. Uh, 79 you left. Yes, okay. Right. So did you just kind of feel the job was done and I'm moving on? Or what, were the, what was the thought back then? You know, it seemed like it was time to hand it over to someone else. You know, uh -huh. once you get once you get in an organization, sometimes your influence is not as much. And I wanted to finish my doctorate. Okay. So you look around the, the landscape of college athletics. What strikes you right now as we stand here all these years later? About, about men's or women's athletics? You know, the skill level. Yeah. Oh, my goodness, the skill level. And to see all of them having as much fun as I had when I, as a young girl, would love to throw and bat balls and, <laughs> and run. Yeah. What was your best sport? Well, you know, it had to be either volleyball or badminton. Okay. When you think of college athletics now, and now we're talking about name, likeness, image, paying student athletes. Did you even envision that back oh in mid-70s? You know, I did not. Yeah. I did not. Um, it's going. It's an interesting path. I'm not I'm on there to decide which is the best to do for yeah. the athletes as well as for their uh, protection. Right. What keeps you busy nowadays? What are you up to? Oh my goodness. It's amazing. When you're retired, then you get busy. <laughs> <laughs> Stunning, right? It yeah. is. Uh, yeah. Do you get back to Boulder often? You know, as often as I can. Congratulations, Jane. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Katie Nixon coming by to say hi and uh, congratulate. Well, Jane, it's, it's been an honor. Yeah, now he's, yeah there we go. Uh, <laughs> it's been an honor to talk to you. Congratulations. Thank you so much for having me. All right, the very first women's athletic director here at the University of Colorado, one of ten inducted into the CU Athletic Hall of Fame last week. Again, at halftime of this ball game, they'll be honored as well. As we continue here in the Stampede, we're talking homecoming. Big weekend for the Buffaloes. That comes your way next.
definitely love coming back to Boulder. It is homecoming. It's exciting. The Buffs need to get a win today. The kids are out there working hard. They just need to find a way to win today. So I'm excited to be able to be here for many different reasons. I came here to work with Unilever on recycling and how important it is for us to come together as a community, come together as a whole. We're the problem and we need to become the solution to recycling and helping out our ecosystem, our community and everything else. They did a great job of coming here to showcase and promote this because Boulder is. It's all about recycling, it's all about being clean, it's all about saving energy. And for five years I've been here, they've really been strict on that. So that's one thing I can take out of this experience I've been here for five years and how clean and how important it is for people in Boulder to take care of the planet. Always great to hear from the great Philip Lindsay, one of the great Buffaloes of all time. Now, of course, starring for the Denver Broncos, voice of the boss, Mark Johnson. Hadley Schwartz, she's a student government homecoming chair, joining us here for a couple weeks, a couple minutes. This is a big weekend for you. Huge weekend. I think this is the best homecoming we've had yet. Outstanding. So, so kind of give us the buildup. How far out do you guys start planning for all the stuff that we ultimately we, do? We start planning in January. We, wow. Once homecoming ends, we kind of have a couple months of a break. Okay. And then we start planning from the marketing, everything, and then over the summer, we really get into all of the events and start getting into all the small details. And it really is, I mean, we, you know, we kind of focus on athletics here on the show and what I do, but I mean, this is a, a really campus-wide yeah. event, right? Oh yeah, we do events for freshmen, for seniors. We had a huge senior night okay. um, this year that was so awesome, so we really try to do something for everyone so everyone can really just feel proud to be a buff. How did you get, uh, I was going to say, wrangled into being the student government chair for homecoming? How does that happen? You know, I don't know. I was a freshman and I wanted to get more involved on campus okay. and I applied for it and three years later I'm still doing it and now I'm a <laughs> senior, so. <laughs> now you can't graduate. you got to stay here. I know, here I just got to stay. <laughs> yeah, without question. Now some great stuff happening all weekend long. Of course it all culminates with a football game, the Hall of Fame weekend, but on Friday Friday night, we had the great pep rally and the parade in downtown Boulder. So tonight we had the 2019 homecoming pep rally stampede and parade. We had over 20 student organizations. The football team all here to get everyone excited for homecoming and especially the game today. This was a vision that we had I think three years ago that we would do this homecoming and we would celebrate here and bring our community together, our students and our campus. Today we have so much unity here on campus. Everyone's coming together just to celebrate how proud they are to be a buff, which is what homecoming is all about. This is the greatest university in America. Five, five. Right we had a ton of different student organizations out here today. Everyone from Greek organizations to club sports. The Environmental Center, one of my favorites was fly fishing. They were so excited and they're always a really fun time to watch. Scope Buffs. Well, that's always a lot of fun, the pep rally. Great to see Chip up there in the stage leading the uh, CU marching band. It was a pep rally, it was a parade. Hadley Schwartz, we continue with her, the uh, chair for the homecoming from the student government perspective. Uh, th this is really a week-long thing, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, talk about some of the events you had early. There was a concert, I guess. Yeah, Tuesday night there was a concert. Um, it was Goth Babe and Johnny Utah, two up-and-coming indie artists. It was right. great, it sold out. We actually had to open up at the last minute and let more tickets go for sale because so many people wanted to come. It's all about celebrating University of Colorado, isn't it? Yep, that's yeah. all it is. Having folks come back from around uh, the country and the world, in fact, alums to get a chance to come back. Yeah. Well, how, what's what's up for you then after graduation? What are you going to do? I'm looking into law school, maybe CU Law. I want to stick around. I love it here so much, so I wouldn't mind just staying here for another few years. <laughs> <laughs> well, keep up the great work. Outstanding well, job all weekend long with all you did for Thank you so much for having me. All right. That's Hanley Schwartz from the student government in charge of the homecoming festivities. It's been a great week here at the University of Colorado. As we put a wrap on this week's Bubble of Stampede, I'm voice of the bus, Mark Johnson, from down in the field, as you can see. We'll talk to you next time.